Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. And today is the video covering the Pico setup guide for DCS. So, let me get started. The first things that you're going to need are the Pico 4 headset, either the 128 gig or the 256 gig, your choice at the end of the day. A copy of Virtual Desktop for communicating between the headset and the PC. And a copy of Steam VR. So if you've received your new headset and you've completed the setup within the headset itself, one of the things that you really want to look at if your PC can handle it is setting the refresh rate. The refresh rate as it currently stands on default is 72 Hz. And if your PC can cope with it, I recommend setting it to 90 Hz, which effectively means that you will get 45 frames per second per eye equating to the 90 frames per second on 90 hertz. If you leave it at 72, you'll end up with 36 frames per second per eye. Virtual desktop is required so that the headset can communicate with the PC. So you'll need a version for the PC and a version in the headset. You can download the PC version for free at vrdesktop.net For the headset version, you will have to visit the Pico store within the headset to download the software. It cost me, I think it was £14.99. Once you've downloaded and installed Virtual Desktop, you'll need to set it up. And these are my current settings. You'll find your Pico username from within your headset. Having installed the Virtual Desktop app on your headset, you then need to select it from the Apps folder from within the headset. The PC and headset should now be communicating with one another, and you'll be able to access the VR Desktop setup controls, which look like this. First, you want to look at Settings. These are my current settings for Virtual Desktop. You're quite welcome to take a screenshot and utilise them to your benefit. One thing to note on this particular screen within Settings, if you look at Use Optimal Resolution, you'll see that I've unticked it. Basically what happens is when Virtual Desktop decides to fire up when you fire it up from the headset, essentially the PC screen reverts to 1080p. My monitor is 1440, so I've unticked it because I don't want that to happen. Next, we need to adjust our streaming settings. And these are my current settings for the headset. As you can see, because I have a 3090, I've chosen Ultra. I've put the VR bitrate up as high as I could possibly go. Sharpening, exactly the same. Put the Gamma to 1. Synchronous Space Warp, I've got it always enabled. Video buffering and track controllers. And that's it. And that's your headset and virtual desktop set up. So let's look at how we set up DCS to work in VR. Firstly, I copied a shortcut link and renamed it to MTVR. So I'm using a multi threading build. Then in the target, I changed the name with the extension on the end as follows. Now I've called this DCS Open Beta Plus because within my C drive I want a completely separate saved games folder so that any adjustments that I make to the VR setup, i.e. views, etc, etc, then they will only be impacted via that saved games folder. Here we have my current system settings within DCS. And what I've found through playing around is that the biggest impact on frames per second and stutters are textures, shadows, MSAA, and the clouds. So basically what I've done is I've adjusted those to achieve the smoothness that you see in the video. Now it's up to you 
to mess around with these because they are the biggest impactors. So if you change those, you'll see an improvement. Now let's look at the VR options setup that I have. OK, so you're going to need to tick Enable Virtual Reality Headset for it to start working. And the slider below is Pixel Density. It's kind of like a form of SSAA. Obviously, the higher the number, the greater the pixel density. And the harder that your GPU has to work. I have mine set to 1.5. Obviously, I've ticked Use Mouse so that I can move around the cockpit and select items. And the next item I've ticked is Force IPD Distance. Now, this is very different to the IPD setting, or interpupillary distance setting, within your headset. This actually increases and decreases the size of the world that you fly in and the cockpit. So essentially, you can adjust this to suit yourself based upon feeling. Next, because the Pico 4 has a sound device built in, an audio device built in, I've ticked that. Also, the MSAA mask size, I've increased it to its maximum so that I get MSAA impacted on both lenses at the maximum extension. Beneath that is Enable HMD Mask. Now, this is really to do with capturing video. With it ticked, you will end up with a mask around the video image that you capture. With it unticked, you get a perfect rectangle with no masking. The VR mirror options are basically what you will see on the PC monitor. So I use the DCS system resolution, which was 2560 by 1440. I mirror eye source using the right eye and crop to rectangle. And that gives me a perfect video capture. And that is the VR settings completed. So now you're ready to fly. Well, it just leaves me to thank you for watching the video, and I hope you found it useful and informative. And remember, I'm not a VR guru. I'm just sharing with you my experience of setting up VR for the first time within DCS using the Pico 4. So I'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination. But if you do decide to buy any VR headset, I hope you enjoy it, and I'll catch you all later. Take care now. Thank you.